Political buying movie tickets. Uh, economics. Yeah. Yeah. The big question mark yeah. is yeah. the GBA yeah. going to do exactly the same thing. Our company is CH or CH, it's okay, is that why okay? Uh, and this is our product, uh, service.com. We are kind of a, um, uh, uh, this is kind of a, a parent company, okay? We, we invent and we uh, patented a lot of uh, uh, AI technologies. Uh, so far we have already patented uh, 18 of them, okay? And uh, we, we use those technologies to make a lot of uh, product uh, focusing more on the AI uh, kind of side. Okay, and today we are going to introduce you um, our product. This is one of our product, service.com. But before that, let me talk about some uh, new uh, advancement in our technology development, in our uh, R&D right now. Okay, uh, and the first thing I'm going to talk about, oh, by the way, I got four hours today, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. Depends Good. on whose watch is it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the first thing, um, the first techno the first new technology that I'm going to talk about is called real time facial translation. I bet you most of you would not know this term because this term is kind of invented by us. <laughs> okay. So what is it? Okay. Let's take this. Let's uh, take a look at this example. All right. So Team Cook. And to get to 100, you have to be inspired by something. You have to be working for some greater cause. OK, this is real. OK, this is the original version of Team Cook. And let's try this. If So that's called facial translation. We can translate not only the person's language, not only the text, but also the facial expression, the uh, uh, lips, you know, the, lip mo the lip motion, the emotion, and better yet, his voice and his tone, okay? And not only uh, Chinese, of course, if... あなたはいくつかのより大きな原因のために動く必要があります。I don't even know whether, whether the translation is good or not, but it's supposed to be Japanese, okay? And, and para llegar a 100, okay. et pour arriver à 100, il faut être inspiré par quelque chose. Vous devez travailler so, pour une cause plus grande. Of the 35 languages we can support, we, people can translate it, uh, any like, videos, any video speakers to that language with our facial translation. So this is very cutting edge already. We are actually cutting the cutting edge. What we are doing? We are going to make this real time. If you watch for 20 minutes, you can get a coupon for 25 off for spending over 500. Le bébé qui a regardé pendant 20 minutes peut obtenir un coupon de 500-25. Just think about it. If this happens in real time, okay? I cannot demonstrate it because if, if I make this real time, you're you not going to hear them uh, clearly. But imagine if we can make this real time, okay? And that's what we are doing right now. If we can make this real time, if we can make the facial translation real time, we can, we can open a lot of possibilities. And one of them we are looking into is the KOL live streaming e-commerce. And in China, I bet you, uh, like, like Rafi, and, you know, a lot of people know in China, there are 10 million, 10 million live streaming KOLs doing live streaming every day, selling uh, different kind of products every day, very efficiently, okay, 10 million. It's already just, just the KOL, just the live streaming KOL population. It's already 1.5 times of the Hong Kong population. Okay, and, and, and emerging, they are talking in Mandarin right now, and their market is like 1.4 billion. If I can do this in real time, they can sell their stuff in real time. They can translate their facial expression. They can translate their language in real time. Immediately, we are opening their market to seven Billion. Okay, that's 
that's our slogan, okay, from 1.4 billion to 7 billion. And also, another potential application. Again, let's go back to Tim Cook, kind of my idol, okay. To get to 100, you have to be inspired by something. If you are a multinational, if you're a CEO of a multinational company, okay, and when you, when you want to deliver a keynote, in your language. If you, want, if you want your audience to understand your keynote in their own language, that would be perfect, right? And, and, and just, 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 uh, uh, just for example, okay, if I'm a, a multinational company uh, CEO, not yet, not yet, okay? Not at this moment, but hopefully I will be, okay? And I want to launch a new product to China, and I'm in US, okay? If I, if I want to, to launch a new product in China, Okay, what I can do, what I have to do right now is probably to spend uh, millions of uh, uh, dollars to invite probably Andy Lau onto stage to help me launch my product, right? And I have to hire an entire marketing team to do the translation, to make sure that he's speaking uh, the right language, and, you know, the right thing to, you know, to, uh, 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 to, to introduce our products correctly, okay? But what happened? with this facial translation, I can launch the product myself. I understand the product the best, supposedly, right? If I can launch this product myself, that would be great. All right. And of course, there will be uh, other like, uh, like great uh, possibilities too, like colleges and universities. If you are a professor, now you can deliver your lecture in your most comfortable language. And, your, uh, and the students, can now receive your lecture in their native language. So you can, you can talk in English, and people in China, India, Japan, uh, France, German can, you know, can, can understand your lecture perfectly. Okay, that will be very good. And, 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 and of course, the students can ask questions in their language, and you can also answer their questions in your own language. Okay, and also meeting. Okay, again, if you are a multinational CEO, when you're meeting with like, the people in China, India, Japan, you know, uh, the employees can understand your, your, your speech like, perfectly. And one more application, okay, just imagine. My mother, when my mother speaks to my, to my wife, okay, somehow they do speak Cantonese, but somehow I don't understand why. They don't understand each other very well, okay? And that, we cannot, do it yet. <laughs> we are working on it. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's all for facial translation, for AI facial translation. The, the next part, the more exciting part, I'm passing it to our COO, Leslie. Thank you. Thank you so, thank you so much, uh, Patrick. Um, so I think uh, that we are, as a company, uh, super excited that this new product is coming. So stay tuned. You will see more in the very near future. Uh, but also, I think Patrick will set a tomb for Sidetrack. We basically is a technology company. We develop technologies that are also using that technology to create new op opportunities which previously does not exist, So, which was one of our you know, things doing right now. Uh, I'm not going to talk about too much about the KOL marketing. I guess everybody knows KOL, KOL here, definitely. Some of them, you are already doing KL marketing. Some of them may not, but you definitely will try one day because I think that's something moving forward. Every company should at least try this. So you will see a lot of logos you are very familiar with, like YouTube, uh, like Instagram and TikTok. So basically, that's what we call those are medias and the, the individuals or the, a set of individuals or the, could it be a, a, a team working together, creating content for their audience. And our marketers or advertisers can using that media to tell your story to the audience to in, enable to do your business opportunities there. So there's a couple of uh, definitions. For example, KOL, which means you have a larger size of audience. You've been kind of subject as experts in particular area. While KOC is more like a community kind of type of the KOL, which have a much smaller but more engaged audience on specific topics or, or the hobbies or things. And of course, what Patrick mentioned is live 
I mean, uh, streaming, which is extremely popular, particularly in China, talking about M commerce. So there's a lot of different ways, I mean, uh, the marketers can work with KOL. Number one is the sponsor content, for example. You probably will see the logos at the end of the KOL video saying this is brought to you by someone. Or normally you will hear that, fireworks, something like that, which means that uh, the marketer will not uh, really dictate the content will look like, but basically invite you to certain events or somewhere, hopefully you are writing the content for them. Uh, product reviews that we normally call unboxing, so basically you have a new form, you want to, someone to test it for you, share the reviews with you. Social media mentions like someone uh, wearing your clothes, saying that, uh, tag your uh, brand name on their social media. And the collaboration, collaborations with content creation, that's pretty one of the most common way how the marketers working with KOL is like, I want someone to, to cre create content for us. So there's a back forward, forwards working on the content creation, then the KOL will be live the content with more like a specific customized content for this particular marketer. And of course, today we're going to introduce our background, marketing. And of course, you know, when we're looking into the traditional collaboration with the influencer, there's definitely two sides. One is the advertiser who want to looking for the KOL. On the other side is the KOL is want to making extra, you know, revenues uh, to reward their, you know, contributions or even creating better content. So they're always definitely, when you do something, there's the pros and the cons. So for the advertisers, they definitely want to do this with KOL. Basically, they want someone as a third party to really tell the product's good or not, to influence the audience you know, who are very interested about the content of this particular KOL, so instead of saying it by themselves. And of course, you will be able to target those set of the audience which are wrong, those KOLs. And of course, you know, lots of, uh, but if you can do, uh, do it right. But for KOLs, also, of course, they want to make money for sure. And also, there are lots of uh, audience in the particular KOL also like certain brands because they are consumers and the audience. And they want to push the KOL, KOC to work with them. Uh, of course, there's a lot of cons as well. So for example, I think I can summarize is that's very time and the resources consuming because you have to work lots of manual work. You need to work on you know, the content scripts. You can back and forth sending the products, particularly if you're working with KOL outside of your country. And you need to work on you know, the, the draft version of the copies to see whether it works or not. Then you need to edit and then come back, maybe take one month or two. It's very normal to actually live a kind of you know, collaboration model of the content on KOL's channel. But how about if you can do this differently? We are Zyvis.com, the world's only AI KOL video background advertisement provider. Our patented, award-winning AI technology enables brands to easily advertise in KOL videos by placing an ad into the central location of the video background. Our AI occlusion avoidance technology offers a high accuracy for object recognition and ensures it will not occlude any part of the KOL's delivery. The result is clean and clutter-free advertising. With Zyvis.com, you can save 70% in costs and 95% of time compared to directly working with KOLs. With the same budget, you can now advertise on multiple channels and broaden your reach and coverage towards your target audience. Advertise with us now. Yeah, I think the video pretty, pretty much says everything, but I still allow me to give a little bit of context about what this video background marketing means. So the, I will play this it's going to be one particular YouTuber's video. 20 minute HIT. It's going to be a crazy sweat. My arms, legs were trembling. I was out of breath, but no pain, no gain. If we want the results, we gotta challenge ourselves. Today is going to be an intense explosive. Sorry. Rocky technology mistake. So, okay, I'm going to open the question to the floor. Uh, when you're looking to this KOL's video, what are you looking at? Which particular area are you focusing? Uh, anyone volunteer to say about it? The speaker. The speaker. 
figure, right? So the KOL itself, right? It's definitely right. I mean, it's going to be an end. So what if? Hold on for a second. What if? Uh, so what if we, you can put your ads right next to the KOL? So which all the eye focus will be? So for KOL itself, it's extremely simple. All he she needs to do is take the photo, creating his her own content, and upload to our server. Our AI technology will scan the video and matching the advertisers and putting the advertising assets right there so everybody will look into that. I think also we are making kind of, you know, a little bit of overlap with the KOL just to make sure that this looks very natural, seamlessly integrated, and you will probably, for most of people, my, my, my learn from is they don't even know this is actually AI-generated advertising <laughs> assets over there. Uh, this is something we think is very benefit to our uh, advertisers. Number one, it's non-intrusive. So if you do like uh, doing this uh, YouTube uh, display advertising, they basically take away all the video you're looking at, putting something completely different that most people are trying to skip, which our ads become a part of the story and a part of the experience of your consum content consumption. So normally you, don't, you won't be able to skip unless you skip the whole video. Uh, also, this will be showing in the first minute of the video, and at least guarantee for your 30 seconds, which means that status shows like 90% people will stay for the first minute, and after five minutes, basically 80% people were left. So that critical golden minute will definitely make sure that the advertisement will be the same, and it will be seen a very nicely way. And uh, for KOL, of course, because you don't have to do anything. You just need to produce your content, upload to our server, and our AI will take care of everything. So basically for them, it's much easier to do this, then which also open them to accept more advertisement and generating more revenue, and more important, saving more time to creating even better content. This demo shows clearly our, how advanced our technology, how accurately we can separate the, the front KOL from the background so you don't disrupt the in, uh, kind of experience. So if you're using Zoom, you probably notice that if you're using virtual background, some of, hair, of your hair, your clothes may gone. We can separate so nicely. So when people looking into that, they don't see the difference. They feel like this access was was already there. So the KOL like it because they want the best experience to their audience. The audience like it because this is a part of their viewing experiences. Today we're gonna to be doing a new set of exercises to flex our old legs. In other words, to improve our both legs condition. And the outfit I'm wearing today is from Whiskey. Whiskey sells beautiful, gorgeous activewear. Yeah, so you can see this is another we call the animate ad. So basically there's a ball uh, there's a game company working with. There's the ball bounce out of the, the screen and the interactive with the surrounding on the background. So in one side, you don't really disturb what the KOL is talking about her best content. On the other side, people get to know, ah, oh, this is the game, and this game particular uh, what's about how fun it is, and you can play with it. Hi, I'm Amy. Today's video is a 15 minutes. I'm not going to go through the, the whole video, but uh, this is, this is the video you think about it. Where, where's the ad? So I'm going to save some time just to, just to make sure that. So the Vita, yeah, that, that box here is the ad. But is this the real product shooting? It is not. So basically in this video, only Amy itself and, the, and this window and <coughs> the background is real. <coughs> Everything here, the table, the product itself, the book, and the cup is made by 3D. So basically what, what the idea is, basically when the product wants to, to uh, advertise on this, they previously want to put the, the product here, but they realize it's, it's a shadow here. So they want to move the product a little bit wrong and to make it more natural, so why not creating a book, something out there. We can do this in like a couple of hours. But if you consider the previously like a traditional collaboration of video shooting, that would take days. 
and even you want to do that for days. I mean, the KOL may not want to do that. So that's the technology, and the AI will be able to help advertisers to push the boundary and do something previously you, you don't even can do without this technology. And uh, for the past 12 months, we have already lived a lot of advertisers, over 400 different videos, generate over 150 million views in Hong Kong. And these are some of our distinguished uh, KOIs we've been, we've been working with. And uh, I'm very happy some of them are already here. We'll be introducing them on the stage to share their experience with us. Yes, ways. Uh, I know she sings very well. She studied music, kind of. Yeah. And Ravi, the been long in Hong Kong, enough uh, certifications on YouTube 2013, and Young Chef Alpha. So maybe you can uh, share with us uh, before and after using AI influencer marketing as a KOL, how does it affect your the interaction to, uh, with uh, your followers. Thank you very much. I think for me, I think there is no big change because usually I do a lot of uh, interview by the TV, press, and also the radio as well as some social media already. So just, I just do the KOL, just uh, I have uh, prepared a lot of things already in my mind and all this, I can present it to my, uh, some of the audience. So I think this is uh, quite, not big change for us. But there is some big change for me is that I have to prepare it, for example, every Monday. If it is not a holiday, because I will take a, a holiday as well. So I do KOL only doing the every Monday. So if I prepare the K, I think the, uh, my, uh, my YouTube and all this, I have to prepare something. But I think if the AI, the solar is already, you know, uh, available. If they can use it, I say some well. For example, I say there is the the U.S. bull market is the phase three, so they can come up with the picture and all the chart and all the data of the U.S. stock market and all this. So I should be very good. I should not. Uh, I think I think it's really, really happy, uh, very fast and very precise that I can present it without any preparation. I think that is the big change. I. I foresee for the futures. Do you need to prepare for the text? <laughs> yes, the text, just a few words, or just the main point, but not to hold maybe 10 minutes talk or something like that. I think this is the big difference. I think this is the, uh, the second one is that for with the TV and radio and all this, I have the anchor or moderator right now. But for the YouTube, I just treat myself, perform myself to talk my uh, main point and all this so that I can I make sure that more my audience can understand. This is very important. So sometimes we will use the uh, chart as well, if possible. This is very good uh, for us and also for the uh, audience to understand. So I have to prepare that. But that part, we have to do quite a frequent presentation or during the seminar or conference. But usually we, are, we will not do every every week, but we may do every 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 uh, every month or every quarter instead. The third one, I think the the challenge is the language barrier because when you talk about the Cantonese or Mandarin or English, we cannot serve a large crowd of different language. So with that, I think AI in future, I think certainly we can do more more. Without doing the subtitle ourselves, we, we do not need to spend the money like this. I think this is uh, very good. And the fourth challenge for us is the uh, respond to the comment and suggestion. Because uh, a lot of them, they give you direct suggestion and comment. You should, uh, I think, reply them within one week, otherwise. Or you say that uh, you take some more time to do the research and all this. Otherwise, I think the feedback is too too slow. I think everyone expects that you have to respond at least uh, within a week. So this is a task for us as well. And second is some of the criticize. So you have to understand how to reply because when you reply, everyone can read your comment and respond as well. So you need certain technique and all this, not one-to-one -one or two-to-two, -two, whatever, or within us. 
small seminar. This is a term. <clears throat> and the last one is that for the seminar, in the past, I charge a lot of money. Uh, so we have a big crowd, for example, 2,000 people. Each one is a few hundred. But nowadays, everything is free. So how can you make the money for that, to cover the cost and all this? But of course, you do not need a venue and all this, but you still some need a quite a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, preparation and all this. This is a cost. So how we can cover? This is, uh, of course, a, a lot of people say that you are, your comment is good. They will come to see us and then give us the money and all this. We, we have that kind of uh, response as well. But uh, directly, at least we can cover it. And then we do the promotion and all this. This is a challenge for us as well. So conclusion is that we have a lot of things to learn because I just uh, start doing the YouTuber, you know, uh, suggest by my daughter. I said that uh, very. I am in a young stage, <laughs> but still learning. Hopefully, with the AI and all this coming, this one to learn fast. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Well, Paul alluded to the inspired by the his daughter, which is the actor Ada. Ada is uh, Paul's daughter. Uh, so the. Ada, maybe you can uh, share I'm with sorry, us. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about the uh, AI influenza the, uh, in KOL marketing. Okay. You, you have been uh, very successful, the, got a lot of followers uh, as a KOL. So how, how do you see this uh, AI the influencing marketing techniques uh, will be helping you to build more followers uh, of the channels all the areas that you have been specializing in? Well, I think my dad already mentioned a lot of good points about making everything more convenient and easier. And, um, well, I think it really helps to, you know, expose more audience, definitely in different countries. But I think um, the most important, you know, I think advertising that's kind of like secondary, the most important really is to stay, stay true to your message and not let the advertisements or um, AI to get over, you know, um, to kind of overpower your true message. So I think it will definitely be, make a lot of my life easier to you know, expose different audiences, but I think um, one thing is like it's easy to get carried away and forget kind of like what your real message is and what you want to bring to the audience. Because sometimes I think um, audiences also don't like it when it's too, man too many promotions or too many advertisements. So I think it's a hard thing to have to balance between making money and also like stay true to your own content. Okay, thank you. Rafi? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I guess my background is a little bit different because we're in a, what's called an MCN, which is like a multi-channel network. So we're like a management company for creators and YouTubers. Uh, but specifically, I focus on bringing content in and out of the China market. So the first part, the, uh, what was it, virtual face swap, what was it? Uh, Real-time translation part um, is a huge, like potential for us because specifically we're translating content and right now we tend to focus on subtitling content so we'll take like English language YouTubers like big YouTubers from overseas and we'll run official Chinese like Billy Billy channels for them for example and the key thing is that content's already made so I can't go back and ask this very busy YouTuber okay now make a Chinese version or read this script in Chinese or whatever so obviously we want to take their existing content and as cheaply and quickly as possible, um, because it's very labor intensive, localize it for the local market. And we've tried experimenting with dubbing, and basically people hate dubbing, because unless it's a really good voice actor, you lose the flavor and the intonation and stuff like that. So people actually say, I'd rather read the subtitles and hear the, the real voice in English. So being able to change Tim Cook into speaking Chinese is like a game changer, right? Especially if it's basically effectively free, right? If I don't have to pay by the hour or by the minute to do that. Yeah, I mean, like, a, like relatively free, not, a, not totally free, but, but like as opposed to paying a translator $10 a minute, which is what a real good translator would pay to translate a video, right? Um, 
And especially when you get to things like podcasts and long form content, like forget about subtitling, it's just too expensive. So to be able to grab any piece of English content and put it on Billy Billy with hypothetically seamless um, translation and localization is, is huge, right? Uh, so that's the first one. The, the part about like the advertising within it is also big. So for example, my, uh, I work with, with Patrick, uh, with Zyviz on uh, Roundtable Poker, which is one of our local creators, which is like a poker game, celebrity poker game. They film those things like six months in advance before they put it out. And so to do a branded, like a sponsored content, six months in advance, you have to say this code and do this and that, it's, it's impossible, right? So to be able to film it six months ago and then edit it and put it out now with a timely, like let's say a Chinese New Year ad with the, you know, the coupon code for this month is huge. So it's basically like post-production ad insertion is huge. And then hypothetically, like, so for example, I could take a English YouTuber uh, from the US and when I'm putting him in China, now I can make a Chinese ad for the Chinese market on the video that's already been made. Okay, now it's gonna be, for Hong Kong, it'll be a Vita Soy, and in China, maybe it'll be a Chinese brand, and in Japan, we can put in a Yakult or whatever. So we can localize the content that's already been made. Maybe it's a 30-year-old you know, movie. We can now insert product placement post, well, in this case, like historical, uh, content can still have product placement put in now in 2024 or whenever that is relevant to consumers and advertisers now. So that's like, it's one of those things that as a creator you might not think about, but as a, like a, a guy who manages um, not only creators, but like content libraries, the fact that I can like re-monetize it again and again is like, I'm sorry if I'm too excited about this, but it actually is pretty exciting. Um, it's like a way to squeeze more money out of content that I paid to produce 30 years ago, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank uh, you. let's hear what uh, Arthur is going to share with us. Um, it's about the, uh, your, uh, Cooking. the yeah. AI technology mm -hmm. that you, you, you're doing right now. Right. So uh, what I'm doing on my channel is about food. I cook food on channel. I go out to eat. I go to rest, visit restaurants, and, but mainly based on food and cooking in, at home. So most of the AI, AI production by Patrick, they inserted ideas, they're all non-related items. For example, uh, bangs, for example, um, what, what is other, the other thing? Beauty yeah, beauty brands, like, which is totally not related to any cooking brands or, or, or techniques. But this, this idea can bring out like, a bigger, wider audience. Like, you may, maybe someone watching may, may be interested into cooking, but more than that, beauty ideas, maybe cars, maybe insurance, banking, who knows. But I, I think your, your products bring me more opportunity to, to and not like third party sponsorships. KOL, right? I mean, you, like other than working with us, like your own experience in KOL. Okay. In, in um, right. So I to be a KOL. I started my channel like seven years ago. Um, from from the very beginning, the, the, the money, okay, the, the income is mainly from Google, from YouTube, and then as my channel grows, more more viewers, more subscribers, um, there. There are quite quite a few of or, 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 or this like third party sponsorship came into me and asked asked me to help them to promote their items. No matter what, for, for example, I did a job with American Express, uh, Welcome, uh, some soy sauce brand. Um, so really, really, you, you really, really have no idea what, what what's happening to you, like uh, m medicines. They came to me, oh, can you help us to promote this medicine? Okay, <laughs> which is very interesting. But, uh, I mean, in this market, there, there, there are a lot of opportunity that you can still try to discover. Actually, author helped my appetite a lot because my, my wife learned a lot of cooking skills from him. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> his, her, her, her cooking skill was, was pretty bad, actually. 
interesting is that, 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 that everybody could be a KOL. Uh, could be the Alpha, could be an Andy. When we first started, you probably is a nobody, uh, unless you are the, someone's uh, big shot sons or relatives. How would you first start to draw the attention of people going into your channel? As a new kid in town, the Greenhorn, first time KOL, uh, you know nothing about the, what you should do. Uh, and maybe how AI influencer would help someone with an interest but no knowledge of getting into this very interesting and competitive market. Would there be some insight shared by the, the panel here? Uh, I think for me, it's quite difficult because uh, most of my forum and all this is in, only in the traditional media and all this. So that is a, a new chapter, new segment for me. It's just an additional channel for you. You write in the Hong Kong Economic General, that you run seminars, you know Paul Paul. Yeah, they know a, it, they hear the name, but some, a lot of them, they don't like the YouTube and others. YouTube now, they are more acceptable to them, but I think uh, for the social media, now they, they use it. I think it's okay. But in the past, if we want to do it, it's very difficult. Hmm. But nowadays, I think they are customers. But then I have to accustom how to communicate them with them. This mm -hmm. is very important as well. Mm. I have to learn how to communicate with them. Uh, for example, because like the article see in the newspaper once a week, here already I just once a week, but if there is something important, will you have your uh, YouTube channel again and all this? So you have to think about a lot of different things like the forecast and you know, really a, a TV or show of yourself. So this is, uh, I think, much more than I did because if you do it, you do it frequently, the, all the audience uh, expect that from that. If there is some, for example, where the, uh, the market will be bottom, a lot of people are asking, you know, mm -hmm. during the Chinese New Year, especially the Year of Dragon, you mentioned that. So Chinese, they, they, they have the belief in the Year of Chicken will be a big change from mm -hmm. bad to good, mm -hmm. because last time is bad. It's from good, maybe to bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so that is a lot of things. You can talk about the feng shui and also the investment. So a lot of things you have to be precise. Timing is very important for the investment as well. Mm. Because we are not talking about the um, investment, uh, for example, skill set and all this. So that's why if for the more long term and all this, I think I will try to prepare some of the courses, which is uh, using the past experience and the future possibility. To, to teach you how to apply some of the techniques in, in your investment, especially like the MPF and all this. I try to think about this with a few courses already because I have teach in Hong Kong Youth Space and all whatever, that kind of course. But I want to make it more simple, more precise, more easy to understand, more easy to apply. So I am doing this. Hopefully, I can have some change with that so the people can read and then pay some money for to, to read, uh, mm. to, to watch mm. that, uh, the courses and all this. Rafi, you have something yeah, to if say? If I can add on, um, I think I might be the best to speak on this because not only have I personally started channels, but I've like, ma managed and coached hundreds of creators over the years. Um, consistency and like commitment is the number one thing to be a creator. So like, I try to explain to people you need to be able to crank out three videos a week for six months minimum before you even know if your channel or whatever will really catch on. Like not even be, not make money, but even start to catch on, right? To know if it's gonna even work eventually, it's gonna take you m many months of basically thankless work with no reward coming. Uh, obviously people get you know, viral quickly, but most people have to put in that, commit to that workflow. And so um, the, the next thing is obviously there's like strategy and things where you can identify places where you have unique selling points. Um, but clearly like the commitment, that's where 99% of the YouTubers fail is they start and they go three months into it and they're like, oh, I'm too busy or something else comes up. So I think where the AI part helps and I've experienced this personally is like it's the workload to do that, right? So the, the more you can lessen your workload, whether it's by kind of focusing on something that's easier to produce 
or you using tools, in this case like AI tools, to make things faster with less manpower. So as a personal example, I, in addition to all the other stuff I do, I run my own Billy Billy channel where I'm speaking Mandarin for the Chinese audience. And after, very quickly, people are like, you should put subtitles on this because your Chinese is not that good, right? Your Mandarin is not that good. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, I have to balance like, okay, the, it's going to be twice as much work or actually more than twice as much work to manually put in subtitles myself. Uh, but if I can reach 10 times more people, it's probably worth it. And then along the way, I figured out that, oh, this one, um, actually, ByteDance, the guys who run TikTok, they have these tools with the AI voice recognition. And it turns out my, my Mandarin is good enough that it can recognize it and make the subtitles. And then all I have to do is fix it. So my like, cost to, or my number of hours to produce a video went from like four hours down to two hours, which means I can either produce twice as many videos per week or I can you know, manage to still put out one video a week without it being such a huge implication, which, you know, imposition, which, which makes me want to quit. So you know, in my case, I was doing videos for three or four years before one of them blew up on Billy And yeah, if I hadn't had that commitment, I mean, it, it, by any sort of measure, it, it probably wasn't worth it because it's like you did three years worth of whatever, four hours a week to get what, uh, uh, like nothing, and then suddenly, okay, now after four years, or in this case, seven years before you really start seeing a return. So it has to be the right mix of like passion, um, something you're interested in doing anyway. So in my case, it was like reviewing food and drinks. So, uh, yeah, it's your passion, right? So, so like if it's, if it's your passion, then it's not a job. Hmm. So if you find something that you love doing, and then you find out a way to make it manageable, and uh, you find the right audience for it, um, my other new thing is because I'm actually living in, I was telling you, I'm living in Japan now. I'm able to like walk down the street and see things that people in Hong Kong would be, oh my God, you get to go to this you know, famous tourist spot all the time when I'm out walking to get my Apple Watch minutes. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to bring my phone with me and film it and put it on YouTube and I'm not going to edit it at all because that's where all the work comes in. So I'm just going to shoot it on my phone. My iPhone can shoot 4K now. I'm just going to put it online. And that's my daily routine now. It's part of my sort of, I guess, exercise hobby. Now it turns into a content <coughs> creating business and it can make money. And oh, by the way, after six months of doing that, finally one of the things I randomly filmed ended up getting 100,000 views. Perfect. And I can monetize it now. So now my, my exercise routine earns me money. Okay, that's kind of a, it's, it's not exactly a business, but it's, Mm. It makes it nice a lot income, more fun nice to and, and secondary income to have. Uh, yeah, it's, it's like a lifestyle subsidy, basically. Excellent, yeah. Um, that's one of the things about being a creator. Like, you could be a, like a professional creator, or you could sort of, like a side gig or side hustle, whatever you want to call it. The like, for me, that's limit. part of it. The sky's the limit. Well, I definitely think it's actually better to start off as a side thing, because you're not going to earn money probably, I don't know when. Some people will be lucky when go viral, but, you know, like any business, there's a lot of unsuccessful stories, more than successful stories. So I would actually say, like, it's better to have it as a side thing, as a hobby thing. And then, you know, don't rely on it as your bread and butter. And, and you also, like I said earlier, like, you want to stay true to your audience. You don't want there to be too many ads. You, you also want to be picky on what kind of ads you put on and so that you, s you build a trust with your audience and um, back to the question where um, how to build your channel, I would say definitely consistency is key. Um, but I think three videos a week is a lot. Like yeah. I would, I would Depends say that's content. a lot. Depends on the content. Yeah, um, I would say my. I think mine is probably like once a week or once every two weeks because mine is more like of a lifestyle vlog. So it does take like, I don't know, a week of videos and I have to edit them into like 10 minute videos. And um, so with AI, it definitely helps because I also have the English and Chinese subtitles to reach a broader um, audience. Um, but I think another way to grow um, is to collaborate with other influencers or YouTuber so that you guys can kind of like ride on each other's followers and also gain new exposure from, you know, different industry and I used to be a little bit more um, shy about that because I don't want to make any relationship kind of like, oh, I just want to collaborate with you. Um, you know, that's why I'm talking to you. And I feel like that's ingenuine. 
But then now, actually, I think that it's necessary, and you can also build like a genuine relationship through collaborating on either YouTube or um, right now I do a lot of Instagram reels too. So I actually have a lot of genuine friendship from that. Um, but I think my thing is like don't be afraid to um, kind of be vulnerable and open up yourself. Um, to other people and opportunities and make connections or even like other indis other influencers where you feel like oh I really like her content like and I would just comment on her stuff and then she would actually comment on my things too because she saw some of my stuff and then and then it kind of like you know the snowballs just keep on going and then we have conversation and then we decide to collaborate together and then yeah, and then I have a lot of relationships that becomes like this, and it becomes a mutual benefit. So I think that's also a really good way to, um, you know, build your audience from that. Yeah. That's the lady over here. Hi, um, I've just got a question. If you're just starting out, like if you're looking to do like a, uh, like let's say a food blog or something, is it actually better to do like post like uh, or is it like rather than like maybe five posts a week or rather than do like one video because actually it takes a lot more time right to do videos than to do post that uh, post right so what 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 are your experiences i would Thank say you. maybe aim for like one photo post and one reel if you say i would say instagram is like the easier way to reach a broader mar uh, market um but don't i don't think you should put t too much like make sure the content is good and aim for one photo post and then one reel. And um, make sure your content is good and what makes you special. Because there's so many food, um, if, you know, food bloggers up there. What is something, I think this is also important, like what is your niche that makes people, oh, okay, like I want to follow her. And I feel like a lot of people, um, I can speak for myself, I also like to kind of learn more about the person yourself, like, I want to learn more about you, like, what do you do, why are you so interested in, you know, reviewing about food, and then they'll grow to be invested in you, and hence follow your um, platform, so I think you have to make it, like, candid and real, and kind of like your everyday life, oh, today I decide to try this restaurant, and then give your honest review, and then you know, put it on social media. So I think you have to, it has to be personal and also um, promotion like, or, or what you want to bring to the table, like promoting the food, kind of like that. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Yvonne, yeah. uh, From my point of view, a post and a video, I mean, from, well, actually from an uh, advertiser's point of view, okay, a post is good. I mean, it's easy, simple, and probably from, a, from an uh, advertiser's point of view, it's, all, it's also cheaper than a video. However, the lifespan of a post is usually very short. <coughs> like, for example, in many studies, uh, 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 like in IG post, the lifespan is like one day, or less than one day, or only a few hours. Meaning that after one day, if nobody sees your post, it's, not, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be like way at the bottom. Right. However, for a video, for a YouTube video, normally the lifespan is like 29 days or one month. So actually, that's, that's actually the uh, best advantage of YouTube because the lifespan of a, of a video is much longer than a photo. And another point is that, like, like, I mean, like posting a photo, I mean, you usually, to, you usually should be at least like some, some sort of good looking. Right? If somebody like me posting, I, I don't think that would generate like, much views. Right? A picture but takes if, a thousand words. A thousand words, but, but less than 1,000 people watch. Then, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but, but in a video, I mean, but when you watch a video, normally, I mean, even someone like me, not like very good looking, I mean, but if I talk about some topic that's interesting, people will still watch it. But if I post a picture, <laughs> I really doubt it. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's my point. Good. Any other questions from the floor? If not, please, ah, yes, sorry. Yes, we've got two. There's still time. Yeah, we still have time, yes. Maybe uh, partly, partly relevant is that we talk about uh, starting uh, a channel or, let's say, using YouTube or Instagram more as a, as a method to, uh, to reach out. Uh, you spend 
seven years. You spent three years to uh, hit a hit one that is uh, really being viewed by a lot. But what can you actually do to reach a wider audience that has already been discovered to be interested in your niche by uh, Google, for example, uh, to actually be presented with the option to open um, that particular uh, video? Because it seems like you are hoping, right? You're on luck. You're like. Doing out, uh, putting out three in a week or one in a week and hoping, well, one, one day one will hit. And from then on, you have repeat business. Um, but are there things you can do to make that happen in the first you know, 10 postings? Well, I guess um, there is boosting posts if you want. You can pay uh, YouTube or Instagram. You can pay to like boost up your post um, exposure. You can actually choose how many people or what age group, demographic, like who you want to see, uh, who you want to see your post, and YouTube. So it works for both platforms. Um, but I would say that would be kind of your last resort because I just think that is not the, because um, it sets like sponsored or it sets like boosted posts. So I think it kind of gives people a, um, a little bit like, oh, it's not like a genuine viral post or something. But I think that would, could definitely help a lot if it's an ad or if it's something that you definitely just want uh, people to see, um, you know, as an advertisement or something. So, yeah, it's it's... It's inauthentic, it's artificial, it's like astroturf, what we, we call it. Like it's not natural grassroots interest in your content. So you can, it, it's somewhat of a shortcut. Like so for example, we boost stuff because uh, YouTube, for example, needs a thousand subscribers to start monetizing. So if we're at like 500 and we're getting 100 a month, I can pay $50 to get there faster. Like those kind of things you can do. Um, but the problem is if your content is too inconsistent or it's, if you haven't found your audience naturally, um, even if you pay for people to see it, they're not going to engage with it and stay and come back, right? So um, it's kind of like a sugar high that doesn't really result in, in quality engagement. And then the algorithm with YouTube views is, does recognize that. So um, when I say like six months before you get one that hits, it's not that you're getting zero views the whole time and then suddenly one gets really lucky. It's also you're building up over time. And so the consistency and the, it's actually also kind of like you're honing yourself. So I'm building up my capability to produce better and better videos over time. And at some point there's like a inflection point where, okay, now my um, engagement with an audience with, okay, 50 different videos, the one that actually does the best, that's the lucky break. But it's also the fact that I've built up my foundation as a creator in my, uh, my presentation, my like, Broadcasting skills, I think you could say, like, like there's some, some kind of level up that goes on along that time too. So it, the 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 trick is there's no shortcut. So the secret is there is no secret. You kind of have to put in the time and effort. And at some at some point, I mean, there's obviously there's people who never break, <laughs> who never break through. But if you don't commit to like the six months part, you're definitely not going to break through. I think. I promise you to be a short one. I'll let you ask the question. Well, I, <clears throat> I had two questions, but since we were short on time, I'll just ask my second question. And it's, it's to Ada and Arthur. For people who don't do this for a living, they don't realize how time consuming this is, right? To edit videos, to shoot these videos, to do the outtakes, whatever. Do you specialize content for different channels? Because a lot of people will do exclusive content just for YouTube, and they might advertise that on IG and say, hey, listen, go to my YouTube channel to see exclusive content. But of course, to do that exclusive content, it costs you twice, three times as much time. What are your suggestions on people, uh, for people who, who want to do this, and, and should they be doing exclusive content for different channels? Yes, for sure. I think you should definitely be doing exclusive content. Um, like what Patrick said, actually, when I work with brands, um, I found it very surprising that they want to, because I have more views on Instagram, I have more subscribers, and YouTube I actually don't have as many. But actually, brands, they would pay a lot, they would be more willing to pay for YouTube because it's a longer form of content. And if they think if, you're, if you have only like 500 or 1,000 viewers willing to watch 10 minutes of you, 
then they're very invested in you and they really like you to begin with. Versus when it comes to Instagram Reel or TikTok, it's like, you know, you know, we all do that. We just kind of like swipe, 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 and we're not really invested in it. So I think it's good to have an Instagram Reel to kind of do a short version to capture, you know, like um, the attention, be like, oh, I actually have a longer and more exclusive and maybe a more longer form of that video on my YouTube. So then people that are already interested in you or the topic that you're talking about, and then they will go to your YouTube and then they can really get to know you in depth. Because I think Instagram Reel or TikTok, it's quite, super, you know, it's quite in the surface of getting to know you. And that's why I also like recommend doing like Reel just because then people get to know you instead of like a post where it's more surface level. So I definitely recommend doing both and then different um, content. So you're attracting different audience and more, more audience too. Um, back to That's what I'm doing as well. Yeah, okay. so, so for example, I, I'm, I'll be cooking a 10 minutes video on YouTube. I will make a one, one minute reel on, on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I will be telling people, look, next week I'll be publishing this video. Go and watch it. Yeah. So I, I'm not showing, I'm, I will not be showing any specific uh, details, but you will know what I'm doing. But no, no ratio, no specific ideas. Come watch it. Right. Yeah, it, it will attract people at some point. Yeah, it, it is. Good. You. With that, please join me to thank uh, this lovely panel for sharing all these AI KOL marketing with us <laughs> for this afternoon. Thank you very much. And before we wrap up, I thank the audience for joining us uh, for this one, two, three talk. Uh, please uh, let us know what you the uh, really want the chamber to organize more the, in future. Uh, uh, and that will help us to the, really zooming in the, to give you more of value the events uh, that uh, would hopefully the, meet your expectations. And for March, uh, just saw some advertising, uh, Frederick Ma, Fred Ma, people know you Fei Ma, uh, will be coming and talk to us uh, on the 13th of March. Uh, on uh, Hong Kong uh, economics uh, in general. And then uh, he is very famous for the defending Hong Kong is not really the wasted land of uh, international financial centers. So 13th of March, if you are free, please come and listen to Fred Ma. Thank you again for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Buying movie tickets. Uh, economics. Uh, big question is the GBA going to do exactly the same thing? Uh,